right, this is take two. Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Reiherden here. And if you have been wondering where I am this morning, we were trying to get the camera to refocus. So I am starting over for... Good morning, my creative friends. It would help if I had my microphone on and get us all focused and ready to go this morning. I didn't have a great night's sleep, so um, I feel a little fuzzy headed this morning. Um, but I am happy to be here with all of you and get some of these other things out of the way in the background. So good morning again. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. and this is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. And I'll be deleting that sort of blooper um, that I did a few minutes ago. And you're going to wonder, what the heck is she talking about? So, you know, it's an, 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 the show is live and things happen, things go wrong. And you're just seeing me sort of paint through all of the insanity. But this month on Painting in Your PJs, I wanted to take on another creative challenge and I wanted to focus on botanicals. So on Tuesday, I started with these just sort of drawing practice of different kinds of flowers. I printed out photos on my computer. These are all photos that I've taken and I use them to sort of look at the shapes of flowers and start to understand the flowers. And then I also used some tracing paper to trace some of the flowers, which really helped me with that sort of muscle memory and to see if I was getting close with my own drawings. So you can go back to catch Tuesday's morning video. And then last night we had some fun painting this sunflower live. And I'm looking at it this morning going, you know, it still just needs a little something something. And so I wanna just come in with a little bit of pencil and maybe just kinda Add even just a little more shading, a little more definition to things. And I love letting things sit overnight this way. There's a difference between what I see in the photo and what I see with my naked eye. And so I'm just sort of being mindful of that, but it just felt like these needed something to really continue to help them sort of stand out and pop out. I even thought it might be fun to come in and layer a little bit of oil pastel over the, the tops of these just for a little bit of texture. I also thought it would be fun just to do some flower drawings with oil pastels, which I think I'm going to play with next week because what I woke up wanting to do this morning and just that little touch of pencil made me happy just brings in that just little extra bit of definition to the to the page. A little bit of distinction. And besides, I love just the sort of sketchy style of things. It feels a little more true to me and like I wasn't trying to make a completely realistic painting. Good morning, good morning. Well, lucky me, I'm sorry you didn't have water aerobics and lucky for me, glad you're here, Tori. So this feels done, just adding those few little bits of pencil lines. Good morning, Marion. Really helped this feel complete. So you can find this video in the live videos section of my channel if you want to watch and play along. And as I'm looking this morning, I found a quote online that I liked and I feel like, like it needs some words or something in the background. It also needs a frame around it so it still doesn't feel quite finished. So I'll finish that up later and share a picture of it because what I woke up excited to work on this morning was uh, more of a folk art style sunflower. But I love just sort of, you know, showing the process of how I'm getting to where we're going and all the different ways we can practice, just like I did with all of the face drawing last month. The more I practice, the more I start to find my own style. And so I wanna play with this bigger sunflower shape and do something a little more folk art inspired. So I'm gonna really simplify the image 
and probably make it a little bit bigger on the page as well and make it also a little more fanciful and a little less realistic. I could spend the whole month drawing sunflowers. I probably won't because I'll get bored. Um, but I do want to just have some fun with drawing. And when it comes to drawing circles, I love having tools at my disposal to help me do that. And that's nice sharp pencil. And so this is called a Helix drawing tool, H-E-L-I-X. You can get them on Amazon or most art supply stores. This is an old one. It's, I think, a little bit cracked up. And this you could also get at a nice um, art supply store or an office supply store. And it's just a great tool. And I want to figure out first where on the page do I want that sunflower. So normally when we're thinking about composition and they teach this in photography as well as in painting, you want to think about the sort of rule of thirds and so this awesome little journal here is seven by seven, more or less, maybe a little bit less. So we've got the center at three and a half here. And we're gonna have the center at three and a half here. And so what this is gonna tell me is that I don't want the center of my sunflower right in the circle and I already have a vision in my head of kind of a, a big sunflower with a little short stem and some playful leaves on a bright blue background so Colorado the the blue skies here truly are beautiful tremendous and um, the sunflowers against the bright blue skies. I can't stop taking pictures of them, even though I see them almost daily on my walks right now, because they just so capture my heart and my imagination. I love the way they're always turning their face towards the sun. So I'm using this as my inspiration and then really taking and making that my own. So knowing that about the rule of thirds, I want the primary image to be above the the halfway mark right and I so I don't want my center my sunflower right smack in the middle of the page I want to create something that's a little more interesting visually and I need room for my stem as well and I am gonna use this tool to get that circle down as well as to get that outer circle down and I do want to think about proportions, right? So if I look at the center, so your pencil is a great measuring tool. So if I look at the width, let's look at the diameter here of my circle is about that long where my thumb is. And I take it over here, I notice that the petals aren't nearly as long as my circle is wide. So even some excuse me, of these longer ones. So I don't need a really big circle around the edge of that, which is where this fabulous tool comes into play. And like I said, this one is, um, I want to make sure that I'm getting right in the, the center, figuring out where the center of that circle is, more or less. And then we're going to come in and use that handy dandy tool. And there we have the outline for our sunflower. And I'm using, this is a pretty dark pencil. This is a, a an H, so it's a hard lead. So it's um, going to be a harder to cover up, but it's much easier to see on the screen. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to give it a funny little just kind of short stem. We're going to make this a pretty dramatic, I want the sunflower to be the, the center of attention here. And I can also look back at some of these photos and really see the, the shape of my leaves. The leaves are very sort of rounded triangles with some definitely little edges and bumps in them. And so I'm going to come in and make those leaves 
and I'm just going for it. I'm going to turn my page so it's a little easier to draw. And those probably aren't quite sunflower shaped, but I like the way they kind of frame the edges of my picture here. Hey, Elena, great to see you, my friend. It's early for you. Happy to have you here always. All right, so there we have kind of that basic structure of where we're going with the sunflower. Clearly, I haven't put the petals in yet, but I want to go ahead and paint the, the background first and then I will come back and paint the, the sunflower. So I'm going to do a bright blue background here on for our sunflowers, for our, our nice sun. So I'm going to start just blocking in some of those colors. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to stick with this turquoise blue that I've been pretty obsessed with lately. And again, if you're just joining me, welcome. So happy to have you here live with me. And if you're watching the replay, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here for the, the replay as well. And I am working on a what I would call a folk art style sunflower painting today. And what I love about folk art as I've been researching and sort of really making that just style really it's what I'm most drawn to when it comes to painting and I want to be able to make that style my own. But it's the very primitive, simplistic nature of the drawings. They're often of nature, pastoral scenes. They're based in cultural representations, not in fine art. They're often, folk art is created by artists that don't have formal skills or training. I always think of the, the Nova Scotia artist Maud Smith is a Maud Lewis, excuse me, is a great example. There's a few famous American folk art painters, and then there's folk art from around the world. Scandinavian folk art is very popular, seems to have been popular again the last few years. I think of the Aboriginal art from Australia, the beautiful dot work that they do. So most cultures have their own unique version of folk art. And so as I continue to paint and grow and evolve as an artist, I think about how can I take something that's a very traditional form and make it my own. And what is it that I love? I think it's the simplicity of the drawings and the paintings. It's the bold black lines. And last month as I was painting all the faces, those of you that were painting and watching along with me, know that the the style that just seemed to sort of emerge from that was a more folk art inspired style. And I'm still working on finishing up that deck of faces in the, the background. I'm working on a giant commission piece right now, so I've got to finish that up first. So I'm at the point where I have all these projects in process, which is not my normal. So I'm definitely somebody that likes a good finished project and I'm ready for this commission piece to be complete and it's almost there. All 
All right, so I'm keeping this super, super simple intentionally. It looks a little messy now. It's going to get all cleaned up with the leaves, uh, with the petals and the leaves and the design. And because it's folk art inspired and it can be the colors of my imagination, it doesn't have to be super realistic colors. I'm feeling like maybe I want that center of that circle to be purple today instead of brown. And I think what I'm super excited about is just getting a base layer of paint down and then coming in with my Posca markers and having a lot of fun with my Posca markers to add in the sort of folk art inspired details. And I'm kind of wishing as I'm starting to paint on this paper and what I'm going to remember going forward from here is that if I'm going to do these acrylic paintings in this journal that is just sketch paper that I want to gesso the pages first. So note to self. And I'm thinking next week that I want to focus on Tuesday on leaves because there's so many beautiful shapes, designs, and patterns of leaves. I took a bunch of pictures this weekend when we were on a picnic and I want to really uh, look at those up close and maybe have some fun with watercolor. And I think on Tuesday we'll do some watercolor leaves and then on Wednesday evening for our evening series I'm going to play with oil pastels and see what I can create because oil pastels are a great way to just practice. A great way to just practice. Okay, so I'm thinking that's going to want maybe another layer but it's fine for now and I'm going to use the Posca paint markers to add all of the, the the texture to these but I'm thinking I want just maybe a little layer of extra color in this one in these leaves down here so we'll kind of come in. I also have a habit whenever I have extra paint on my palette that I want to just use that up and so I have to look um, be mindful that I don't just start putting color everywhere on the page in an effort to just use up some of that paint and I had all that leftover paint last night and so I grabbed a big journal because I had extra paint and I just opened to a page in the center and I have this gorgeous background that's probably going to get something drawn on it but also I it's such a great way to use up that paint on our palette and then to have painty pages in our journals so I always have another journal or book pages or something nearby that I can use for just cleaning up beats, bits and pieces of the art. Okay, so I need to come and put the petals in and I need to decide if I want to draw the petals first or if I want to just go straight to painting them. And what I'm feeling like is I'm going to go straight to painting them because I can't be perfect that way. If I start to draw the petals, I'm going to get caught up in the, the details and remember with this one it's going to because it's a folk art piece it's going to be a little more symmetrical and you know a little more perfect than this one i'm not going to include these little grasshopper chewed bits or the sort of patchy look of the the petals i want the petals to be a little more perfect even though they wouldn't be perfect in nature get some of my favorite azo yellow deep here and we'll start with the yellow 
actually I'm going to hit this with the dryer real quick so I don't end up mixing all of that purple from the center into my yellow petals. And I actually really like the purple on the leaves and I know that's going to show through when I add some nice green over the top of that. I got some of these edges really thick, which I like the texture, but makes it a little hard to get it dry. And once I get these petals in there, I'm probably going to come back and touch up between them with some of that blue again at the very end. All right, so do I have, let's try a round brush for this. Round brushes are great for petal shapes. And I just mixed all that yellow with my blue, but we're just gonna go for it. And if I can just kind of let that brush do some of the work for me, this is easier to do with watercolor, but we can kind of imitate that and get that, those petals started just by using a round brush and it's making a really nice rounded shape to those petals and we notice on the sunflower that they're pointed at the edge like it's amazing that when you look at the just small part of the petal that's connected to the center it's really kind of amazing to look at And I'm okay if that brush sort of, you know, spreads out and creates some little different shapes, getting some of those a little raggedy, always starting from that outside edge. So I'm getting that rounded bit at the center. I'll come back in with a smaller brush to finish out the ends of those. Georgia, Georgia's over here knocking all the paint brushes off my big studio table. She's so helpful. I also took some pictures. So in the park where I often walk in the mornings, there are cherry trees and then there are, that's going to be too blue, isn't it? Um, there are also apple trees and pear trees. And right now they're covered in fruit and um, that the birds are enjoying and they're super tiny but I took a bunch of pictures of these gorgeous pears and apples I loved the the colors of them and so I know at some point as part of our botanicals I want to look at drawing from some of these bits of fruit so I've been having fun sort of taking intentional photos with a different eye thinking, oh, I want to draw that or I want to paint that. Yesterday I played peekaboo with a very curious little squirrel and got some great pictures of him. So I see a squirrel painting coming. And we've also been seeing a lot of ravens lately. And I love ravens. And I had one really large raven painting that I'd done for my son and then when he went off to college I painted over it he was not happy with me and so I've been wanting to do another big raven painting all right so that was an easy way to sort of get those petals started around the edges um, I love that all right so now I'm going to come in with a small brush with a little bit sharper edge on it. And we'll bring those petals all the way in to the center. And I'm going over that purple a little bit to make sure I get them all to the edge, but that's okay. I'm gonna either draw or paint over it. I can also see a little bit of that pencil line there in the center. 
and it'll take a couple of layers because remember our yellows are more transparent. Just get a little bit of that yellow down here as well before we bring in the green. I've noticed I've got a couple sort of peeking out beyond my circle down here, which is fine. So maybe I want to repeat that up here. Again, it might take a couple of layers of that paint to cover that up. And so once these are completely dry, I will come in and fill the background in with the blue. And I'll probably go back and forth with the blue and the yellow for a bit. But this is a great first layer. I definitely want some variation in those colors of yellow. I love yellow and purple together. And I want to come in with, get some green on our leaves. All my favorite brushes are over on the other table. The ones that are over here seem to be all the ones that are the ends are getting frayed because working on canvas with acrylic, I'm very hard on my brushes because I really love to scrub the paint. And I don't buy expensive brushes because I know how hard I am on them. <clears throat> I think I want just a little bit of that purple in the green brown that up just a little bit to get that right shade of green. Interesting, so this particular green is quite transparent, does not have a lot of opacity. So it's going to take maybe a couple of layers of that. Or I may even come in with a little bit of white in there. Although I kind of like all the, the texture that's underneath so far. And I can still see places where I'm going to need to clean up the blue. But if I waited till the end to do the, the blue, I wouldn't get... Um, maybe as crisp or as clean around the edges. And it's just not quite the right shade of green and I'm realizing that it, it needs um, maybe a little bit more of this. So this is a light green permanent and um, where'd that olive green go? And it's a little more of sort of that grassy green so let's see if we can just mix those and get, that feels like a better shade of green. Feels like it just needs a little brightening up. I do like that I can see the, the veins underneath with that purple peeking through. Detailed paintings like this require less talking and more concentration. So I still see a little glimpse of what's underneath. And this one also feels like a, a fun one for maybe a, a quote or some words. So I want to have some fun maybe poking around and looking for some fun sunflower quotes. And I'm going to clean my brush off on this page over here. Still had a lot of that green paint on there. And I'm sure something else will get painted on that page. So I'm going to hit this with the dryer again, and then I want to touch up the blue around the edges of everything. Thank goodness for these craft dryers because they definitely speed the painting process up.
definitely wanting to add some more layers of yellow to this before I get into details. I'm just going to blot any other little bits off of there. Mm, look at that. We got a blot of purple where that purple was still wet. It's a good thing everything is paint over bowl. Take a sip of my coffee. All right. I want to get the blue in between all the places so I can kind of see what's there. So I'm going to come in with a teeny tiny little brush and clean up some of these edges. And I'll probably have to clean them up again at the end, but this will give us a start. And I kind of want to come back over here and round up the edges of these leaves here. Give them just a little bit of that sunflowery shape. So remember I'm being inspired by a sunflower, not trying to make this uber realistic. And yet I still want it to be recognizable as a sunflower when I'm done. So I'm going to come in just a little bit of blue in these inner parts. I'm not trying to be too precious about it, just covering up that white because the, the petals are going to have more detail drawn around the edges of them. Everything is going to be outlined in thick black, but I do want to be able to see where the sky is shining through, right? So we can see in these edges where we can see what's behind the sunflower. The petals aren't completely stacked on each other. And then we want to get rid of this circle around here. which is also going to really help me see the, the sunflower shapes, the petal shapes, what I need to touch up. I think the other thing I like about doing a more folk art style painting where it allows me to add the detail and the drawing and the patterns at the end that I love is because it feels very mindful it allows me to slow down. It allows me to really look at the, the shape and texture of things. And any time that I can make my art practice a more mindful, centered, spiritual practice, the more it supports every aspect of my life, not just the creative aspect. And it's the thing that personally draws me to art over and over again, is how much art has helped me grow as a human being to remind me to be in beginner's mind, to be present here in the moment, to let go of perfectionism, to let go of paintings and paint over things has taught me a lot about letting go in other areas of my life. So, so much of how I've grown as an artist has supported and paralleled how I've grown personally also. Probably going to come in with a little white and touch up the tips of these petals. So you'll notice all the petals now are looking kind of messy. It's all fine. We're going to clean it all up. I 
don't know if I'm going to finish this one in an hour or not. We'll see. But I am kind of liking the even a little more of that blue in between some of these. And we'll clean up some of this purple here in the center as well. I love the vibrancy of the colors and it feels like it's a good first layer and a first start to everything. So I'm going to hit this with the dryer again um, and then I'm going to work on those petals some more. What's everybody else working on this morning? Uh, anybody painting along? Working on other projects? This is such a great time to just be in creative space together which was my intention when I created this show. It's coming along. It's getting there slowly but surely. I'm going to find some white. And we talked last night in the live class about the texture of the sunflower petals that when we're painting a scarecrow with a sunflower in his hat. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. I love it. You're such an amazing painter, Tori. I always love seeing your paintings. That when we look at the petals of the sunflowers, they have a lot of striations, a lot of texture in them. This particular flower is kind of orangey in the center with the brighter yellow on the outsides. I'm going to do all of that with drawing more than with paint this time. Finishing touches to soul collage, looking forward to leaves. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, me too. So if you think about it this weekend, you might have some fun picking up some leaves or taking some close up pictures of leaves, really noticing the variation in shapes. I'll come back in over the top of these with yellow again. But I want to make sure I'm covering up that blue. And this is going to help also brighten up the edges of those petals. I'm just cleaning up the edges of some of those. And part of me is curious if I had drawn the petals first, maybe even put in the, the black outlines first, would that have been easier or better? And something to try for the, the next time. And I've started working on a large sample for my Tree of Life retreat in at the end of October here in my studio in person in Loveland, Colorado. We still have a few spots available for that if anyone wants to come play with me live in the studio. And I've been having so fun, so much fun working on the sample. I sent a picture out in my email this morning.
All right, starting to brighten that up, get some lightness in there so that feels great. And I'm going to get that tiny brush going again. And I want to get some of that bright in the center. So when we look up close at the leaves of a sunflower, the veins are very symmetrical and they're very light colored. Like in my mind's eye, I always think of the veins of a leaf as being dark, but they're not. They're usually very light colored. We still just get a little touch of that purple shadow behind, but it's amazing how just adding the vines. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, thank you. Really brings these leaves to life. Just put a little light along the edge of that to give it a little sense of roundness. So I use that purple to shade the one side and that light green to shade the other. So I'm really happy with the leaves and the stem. They're really going to pop a lot when I put those black outlines on there. And now I want to come back and let's work on our petals and then I'll be ready to add the the drama with the black lines which always amazes me how it just changes up everything and i'm going to try and see if we can brighten up this yellow a little bit it's feeling like that's mm, too bright it's not sunflowery yellow enough It feels better. And it's fun to play with color even on something as tiny and small as the petal of a flower. to experiment. Actually, maybe because they're tiny, it's easier to play and experiment. They don't all have to be the same exact color and shade. I don't need to cover up all of that white. You can tell I'm focusing when I get really quiet and start stop chattering. I'm also noticing as I get up close that my stem right here isn't connected, so I need to pull the edge of the stem up closer to my flower. I'm kind of feeling like maybe I don't want that much blue there. Okay, that blue was still a little bit wet, so we'll let that dry and then we'll paint that over. And then the other thing that we looked at yesterday was in regards to the center of the flower, how much texture there is in the center. But like I said, I want to do that with the Posca markers to draw in some of those details. And I'm going to come in with a little white over this purple here, let that dry, and then we'll add some
more yellow to that. Okay, a little bit more white in there. Don't ask me why. So I'm just, as always, just sort of trusting my intuition, playing with the paint. Anything I don't like can go away, come back again differently. And it's so fascinating that this is such a simple painting relative to this one that I created last night. But almost because it's so simple and so dramatic, it's actually taking me as long, if not longer, to create this simple one with sort of those clean edges and lines, right, over this much more abstract one that I painted last night. I'm also noticing as I'm looking at the camera, what I didn't notice on screen was that I'm still seeing my pencil circle in here. brush. So I want to come in with another layer of my blue and just make sure I pull that color out. And I may add a, a pattern to the background. I'm a big fan of, oh I've forgotten her name, the something Heller, Barbara Heller maybe? the lady that wrote Folk Art Fusion, which is one of my favorite inspirational folk art books, although this one is not quite in her style. But I do love how she adds patterns to the backgrounds of her paintings. Okay, that looks better. I'm not seeing as much of a circle there. So looking for places where maybe just that little bit of pencil was still showing through or where my strokes were going around the circle instead of out into the edges. Love the colors, love the brightness of it. Good morning, Misty. Thank you, it's coming, coming together. Okay, let's get some more, see if we've still got some, a little bit of wet green over here. We wanna make sure that flower is just going, or that stem is actually connected to our flower. Now I'm gonna get this super dry and I'm gonna come in with those bold black lines, which is one of my favorite parts of the folk art painting and drawing because it's where we really start to see the shape and the images pop and then come in with some other colors for some detail but I don't want my Posca's anywhere near wet paint. I have ruined so many pens and markers by being impatient. Right, grab my giant box of Posca markers here. Actually, maybe we'll see which of these is working best. We might use uh, the Posca and I might use a, oh, that one looks really good. So one of the things that I wanna do is, cause I do want to keep that center of the flower as round as possible. Those are, that's one of the things that I'm leaning towards, everything else can be asymmetrical. I think I did pretty good getting those leaves more or less symmetrical, um, which is tricky, and figure out which circle this was. And I'm gonna use this to draw my black circle. Yep, I'm gonna do this small one because I wanna keep the roundness of that particular circle. And then I can see some little spots where maybe I need to touch it up, but it's a place to start. 
and then I'm going to come in and just define each of these petals. Again, it will show me where I need to do a little bit of cleanup, where maybe I don't quite love the shape of the petal. Didn't maybe get them quite as pointy as I wanted in the center. So maybe some of these I can work to make them a little more pointed. But I love this part of adding the lines to clean something up. I don't know what it is about the doing this that just always feels like that little bit of magic at the end that brings everything to life. I think part of why I love this is it because it always does feel when I start to add those patterns a little like Zentangle for me. And I intentionally chose a pretty thick Posca. You notice I'm not using a really fine tip one because I wanted the, those lines to be bold and dramatic. And I can change the, the look of it if I were to use a finer tipped Posca, but I wanted that kind of bold look. All right, so this piece just makes me super happy. Again, I feel like I want to do some journal writing, maybe even come in with some of my own journal writing in the background with a white gel pen might be an interesting look. It definitely needs a, a little something something in the background and it's pretty the way it is as well. So now I want to start just coming in that's really yellow. And I'm going to use the, the Poscas to just add some more color and depth to get some of those lines and striations in our flower. And then remember in our sunflower that there's always a lot of texture in the center as well. I don't know if this one's very good at doing circles. Again, just slowing down, taking my time. I'm probably going to add some other colors here as well, but I wanted to start with that really sort of bright pop. I'm going to bring just a little bit of that yellow into a few spots in my leaves and my stem where there's just that little bit of light hitting. And it needs a little bit more uh, purple uh, shadow down the edge here, but I can also do that with my Posca. And I might add a little bit of that in the bottom of my flowers here, just sort of pulling all of those colors
so funny I'm looking at this one and it kind of reminds me of a little bit of toll painting remember when toll painting I remember my mom doing toll painting back in the back in the 70s and I want to get some oranges going here so I'm looking for there we go that's perfect again just getting some of those lines that texture that we see I think what I love about using the markers over the top of the paint is how much more control I feel like I have than I do with a, a brush I can get those really fine lines I know some people are genius at doing that with the brush Oh, that's so cool that you still have a piece that your aunts made, Marion. I love that. I still see them sometimes uh, for sale in antique stores. Just coming in and touching up in a few little spots where some of that blue is still peeking through. And I love just the, the variations in color as well. That center definitely needs some white in it. And I'm going to bring in my little teeny tiny brush one more time and get that one little triangle blue there. I want that brush to be super, super dry so that I'm only getting paint where I want it. I don't want it to flow at all. And I almost always end up touching up the, the black lines as well. I can always tell when I start to get too precious with it, when I get too caught up in the those final little details. But it's close to being done, or as I always like to say, done for now, because I never know 100% for certain if it's finished until I walk away from it a bit. All right, let's see, find a white one that works. I seem to go through a bazillion white ones all the time. And I think I'm just going to come in with more little dots in between the yellow dots. Just feels like we need to brighten this up. And again, that primitive style, there's not a lot of depth not a lot of you know focus on perspective we're kind of looking at everything head on and it's about just simplicity and capturing just the essence right just the essence bring in a little more white and some of those edges just brighten that up just a little bit that little bit of light sparkle okay that was too much white
So it's time to start fussing with it because now I'm making a mess. And if I make too much of a mess, I just have to come back in with the purple and start over again. And everything is fixable. It's one of the things I love about acrylic painting. But I think for now, I'm going to call it good enough, done enough. I'm going to sign it. And date it. So that I know I did it when I did it and I had a lot of fun doing it. I learned a lot and um, I noticed that my petals over here got a little bit long. It's not perfectly symmetrical and again it's good enough for now. Actually I'm looking at it and you know what it needs? It just needs fun splatters all over the page. So um, I'm going to get a little more yellow paint, a little more white paint, put all these poscas away, clean up my space because splatters make such a big mess all over everything. And it just like, um, it's like it's missing a little bit of the sort of oomph drama and white. Everything's buried little bit of that yellow, a little bit of that white. And I do have a spray bottle, so I want to get this pretty wet. I do not want to spray my keyboard though. And let's get a small brush. And then I'm just going to come in And that's what it needed. It just needed that little bit of something, something in the background. Not a lot, not too much of anything, but I love that. So that was what it needed just to give it that little, little something, something. And now I can see, okay, maybe I want a few more of those. The thing about sprinkling the, the paint, splattering the paint like this is it definitely tends to go everywhere around you. So it ends up on you. You can see where it's sort of sprayed over here. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're spreading paint that way. Okay, now it feels finished. I'm like, all right, what is it that it needed? It just needed, again, that little something something. So now it feels complete. I feel happy. Um, loved this painting session. I had fun this morning and uh, at the end of the day, as long as I'm having fun, I keep coming back and I'm so grateful that you all keep coming back to join me here in the studio for Painting in Your PJs live with Manette Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you as always for joining me live. Thank you for catching the replay. Please hit that like button up there and let me know if you like what I'm creating and let other people know it's a video worth watching. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day and your week and I will see you guys all next Tuesday. Bye everybody.